So the first thing we have to talk about when we talk about volcanoes is the idea of lava and magma because these are the things which are basically are involved in volcanism, rising plumes of hot searing melted rock. And that's actually what is the source of this volcanism. Now, before we talk about that, you have to understand the basics of temperature and pressure. Now, remember, temperature is a measurement of the intensity of heat or how much the particles are moving and colliding with each other. And this is going to be increasing as you go deep into the Earth because you're going to be having greater compression, uh, greater radioactive decay, and iron crystallization, and leftover heat from the formation of the Earth as you go deeper and deeper into the Earth. Pressure, on the other hand, is the measurement of the amount of force applied to a certain space. And especially when you, this space cannot move, you're going to have to create things like stress, like we're talking about the deformations of the crust. Why that's important? Because when you talk about the layers of the earth, it's an interplay between pressure and temperature that causes the rock to melt or not and be different. And you learn about that when we talk plate tectonics and we learn about a stenosphere, lithosphere, and mesosphere, and the, all the other layers of the earth. And we're going to be doing a little bit of reveal about that at the end of this video. But basically, the way the rock acts has everything to do with the interplay between pressure and temperature. And whenever the temperature is high enough for the rock to hit the melting point, it's going to melt. But that melting point depends on how much pressure the rock is under. If it's under a lot of pressure, the melting point goes higher. And that's why different layers act in different ways. Magma is molten rock, or any time the rock actually reaches above the melting point for any given pressure. And this is going to happen in many places of the earth. And you also have lava. Lava is when that same molten rock actually reaches the surface and hits either water or air, which causes the, the, the magma to rapidly cool and solidify and become more viscous, more crystallized, and lower temperature. And so the only big difference between magma and lava is the temperature, the viscosity. Lava, lava is a little more viscous and less fluid-like the way magma is. The magma is a little more pure liquid, lava is a little more crystallized, a little more solid-like, a little more viscous. Uh, lava is typically colder than magma, which is in the, near the source of the heat, and so forth. And so, the places on Earth where you will find molten rock are, first of all, the outer core. Because the outer core is so hot, and under not as much pressure as the inner core is under, that's why it's solid, but the outer core is so hot that it's going to be liquid. So number two over here is a liquid layer of rock that's spinning around in circles, which we creates, by the way, the electromagnetic field of the Earth, but this is a liquid layer of rock that's constantly moving in the inside of the Earth, transferring through heat from the inner core to the mesosphere of the mantle. And so that's a part of the Earth which is basically liquid. You also have molten rock on the mantle, on areas which we call magma plumes. And you see some of these suggested here on these drawings, okay? And a better picture that show that idea is this one, where you actually see the narrow upwelling columns of hot magma, which has lower density. Since it's hot, it's going to expand. And as it expands, it rises. But as it rises, it hits areas of lower pressure, which makes it melt even more. And so the, as it rises, it becomes more and more liquid, and it reaches the top. That heat is transferred to the stratosphere, and so it's going to cool down. And as it cools down, it becomes denser again, starts sinking in long sheets of lava that heat to reach the bottom again to restart the process and do what we call mental convection. And so these rising plumes of, of magma are going to be part of the mantle. You also find molten rock at the surface in what we call lava. And here's some pictures or examples of that. But remember that as soon as it hits the surface, or the water for that matter, it will actually start to rapidly cool to become rock. All right? Now, it's actually easy to picture in your mind the idea of lava. It's also easy to understand the, the core being liquid on the outer core because it's so hot. And so the rock actually melts. It's a little harder to visualize the idea of mental plumes or the idea that this very dense rock is melting and rising in the mantle. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Mantle plumes are just basically areas we call hot spots where the lava is picking up a lot of heat from the core and rising to the surface. Two major hot spots exist in the earth. One right underneath Africa, which is actually causing Africa to shatter into pieces. It happens kind of because of the pressure that was generated during the formation of Pangaea. And the leftover of that is still around. It's actually making Africa kind of split, as you see here. And so we call it a divergent uh, magma plume. 
You also have a convergent magma plume somewhere here in the Pacific Ocean where the magma is rising to form hot spots which are responsible for the formation of the island chains such as the Hawaiian island chain. So remember that the magma plumes are always going to be coming from the molten uh, outer core which is liquid and these are going to be rising to the top and as I said before as they rise they hit areas of lower pressure which makes the rock melt even more and increase that and we know this happens because of topo topographical data seismological data the way the, the, the ways we frat as they hit the, in, the inside of the earth I'm gonna be there's another lecture series that I do that's called the inner earth where it talks about the, how we know about all of these things you should watch it if you want to learn more about this topic now the hotspots idea is that idea that if you have this rising plume of magma underneath the crust it will punch through the crust, melt the crust, and form volcanoes. Or, and usually they are shield volcanoes in the middle of the ocean, which creates islands such as Hawaii. Uh, large island chains, which then get eroded into guyots and form these big chains in the middle of the ocean. You have that as the Hawaiian chain in the Pacific, as well as the Emperor Seamount chain. Both of those are created by this kind of hot, hot plume activity that exists on the Pacific Ocean. Another type of place that you're going to see the, this hot magma plume rising is on divergent boundaries, where a hot layer of lava, like I said in the previous video, is going to be rising, melting through the crust, pushing the crust up, causing an uplift, making the crust thinner, and eventually cracking through the crust and creating new crust in between, like we talked about. And this is happening because the crust is spreading because of the mental convection, slap pull, ridge push. We talked all about this on plate tectonics last year series. And this is another place you will find magma. A little less obvious is going to be magma formation near the surface. Magma formation that does not have anything to do with outer core heat. But basically, it's actually formed because of a subducting plate. If you actually look at the lithosphere in a subducting plate, you will see that normally, especially if this lithosphere has water on top of it, such as an ocean versus ocean or ocean versus continent co collision, in this case, you see an ocean versus continent collision. That wet lithosphere is going to be hit going underneath a uh, continental crust and it's going to be wetting the continental crust. When you wet the continental crust, you lower the melting point of the, of the rock, makes it easier for the rock to melt, and that lithosphere then, exposed to the high temperatures of the mantle and the asthenosphere that's underneath it, are both going to melt and form lava. But remember, as soon as you melt the rock, it becomes less dense and expands, it's hotter, and it rises. But as it rises, it melts the rock around it and pushes through it and create these things that we call magma intrusions or mental plumes. And in this case, it's a mental plume that does not necessarily come from the core heat. Of course, the asthenosphere is hot in the first place because of the core, but this is actually happening because of subducting plate that has water in it, which lowers the melting point of the asthenosphere, which will otherwise not be melting. Otherwise, you would expect the same thing to be happening in the middle of, the, of nowhere here. That's not helping, though. That's not happening because it doesn't have the wet ro uh, water that's coming along the oceanic crust. So these mental plumes have everything to do with subducting plates. So to review, the outer core, rising plumes, and the surface, you can find molten rock. And this molten rock will rise most often in things called magma plumes, which come from the outer core heat in things which we call uh, convection cells or mental convection and these will cause hot spots divergent boundaries and along subducting plates you have a similar process where the asthenosphere and lithosphere melt as they get wet by the uh, subducting wet oceanic crust which lowers the melting point of water and causes the same kind of process that happens because of the heat of the outer core touching the lower body of the mantle and creating those convection cells in order for you to actually have magma or to magma to form you, get, you have to have a situation where the melting point of the rock is being reached. Now, this will happen, for example, at the mid-ocean ridge because you have a rising hot layer of rock rising there. It would also happen in a hot spot for a similar process. And it will happen in the, in, in the subducting plate. By the way, we know that subduction is taking place underneath the ocean because if we actually measure the heat of the crust, uh, along, the, along the surface of the earth in the lithosphere, you will see that a subducting plate will actually go down and actually melt as it goes down, but then that, that same heated material will rise again into the crust. So what that's actually showing you is what will happen in this picture on the bottom here. You see how the measure of heat flow actually kind of mirrors what's happening here. Pretty much same temperature, but as it subducts, it becomes hot. 
rise the end. So you see the same kind of curve that you see in the top of there. So this pattern of heat flow is actually evidence of subduction alongside with earthquake seismological data which we discussed in the previous chapter. So in order for magma to form, you have to have specific conditions being met. First, you have to have a rock that's hot enough to rise above the melting point of the minerals which make up that rock. Usually this happens between 800 and 1900 degrees Celsius depending on what kind of minerals are part of the rock. Also, remember that at higher pressures, it's going to take more heat to make the rock melt. And the idea for that, it makes sense. If you're compressing something, by definition, you're not becoming liquid. You're becoming more solid-like because you're pushing things together. And that's what the definition of a solid is. It's a dense material. So if you add pressure, you make things solid-like. So that makes it harder for things to melt at higher pressure. So the higher the pressure goes, the higher it is to reach this melting point and the more heat you would need to actually make the rock melt. Now, when you mix things up, it actually makes the temper melting temperature different than if you have a low material. In other words, if you're trying to melt iron, that's one temperature. But if you're trying to melt iron per carbon, the temperature is not going to be the same. Because now you have a, 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 a material that's composed of a combination of elements. A new melting point will be formed. Mixtures melt and boil, for that matter, at different temperatures than the pure substance. For example, remember when we learned about ocean water, we learned that if you add salt to the water, you're going to change both the freezing or melting point and the boiling point or condensation point of the water. Mixtures will map to different things. So that means that if you have a rock that's composed of a lot of different kinds of materials, you're going to also affect the melting point. Also affecting the melting point is the addition of fluids. If you add water to, to, the, to the rock, and it makes it easier for the water to, to rock to melt or it decreases the melting point of the rock by making the rock softer. Putting this all together, you understand that as you go deeper, the temperatures are getting hotter. And remember, the pressure is also increasing. So it will, it will change the way that the rocks will actually act. We talked about that. Underneath both the continent and the ocean, temperatures will increase quite rapidly at first. Over the first 50 kilometers or so, temperature will pick up very fast and you're going to get from zero degrees to 500 degrees over the first 50 kilometers of the crust and this gradient will be even faster underneath the oceans than they will be underneath the continents as you can see from the yellow versus the green line yellow line means, means how fast the oceans are speeding up once you get around 50 degrees there's a transition zone in the continents where the temperature stops picking up as fast as it did before and it will, it will still pick up quite fast but not as fast as it did before and Underneath the, the oceans, the temperature will continue to pick up quite fast and it will warm up very, very fast, but then it will hit a point around 75 kilometers deep where the temperature will stop picking up as fast as it did before and will kind of level out. And from that point on, it will actually slow down quite a lot and not increase as fast as it was increasing before. If it did increase as fast as before, you would actually have the core having to be a lot hotter than it actually is. And part of the reason why this is not increasing as fast as you would think is because of the way the pressure is under and because the materials are changing and becoming denser as you go into the, deeper into the, earth, into the earth. And so it's becoming harder and harder for the temperature to increase and for the materials to actually melt. Notice that after the first 150 kilometers of, of the lithosphere, rock does not really tend to melt much. It might become a little more plastic-like at the, at the point you get to 100 kilometers deep. You're already hitting the asthenosphere here but it won't necessarily melt. It, it actually won't melt at all uh, until much deeper than this when, you hit, when the green line and the yellow line somewhere down, all the way down are going to actually hit this line here completely. Because you see this, these blue lines are representing the, the points at which the rock will start to crystallize and becoming a little more liquid-like. And the second blue line is where it actually melts. Notice that this will happen between 900 and 1900 degrees depending on the circumstances. Complete melting of rock though typically doesn't happen until you reach at least 1700 degrees or so. Alright, now notice that this will not happen at the first 150 kilometers of, of, the, of, of the earth in, in general. There is one point at the oceans where a rock will actually melt, start to melt, but then the it actually will slow down a bit and you, you will not actually get, the pressure will increase a little bit more and the, the rock won't melt again as it goes deeper from that point. So that's actually a very interesting line I run up deep under the oceans only where the rock kind of melts and that's what we consider the new layer of the mantle that we call the asthenosphere. That's the transition point of the asthenosphere right there when you have the area where the rock kind of melts but not really. 
but then it becomes denser again as you go below that. 